guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rhea and welcome to Eye Candy by Rhea. In today's video, we're going to be doing another purchase of pass where we discuss about new makeup releases and whether they're worth adding to our cart and purchasing or just passing because honestly, I do question why some things are released. I'm going to cover some old ones because I haven't done one of these in Forever. I know I've been on a little bit of a hiatus and I apologize. Clearly I have been going through stuff but I want to come back with a bang and you know filming a video that I just love doing and just excites me and just gets me into the makeup world and the makeup mood. And also with that being said I would also love to hear your thoughts on all these makeup products and new releases in the comments down below. And also, I would love it if you guys would give a like to this video and subscribe to my channel and just join the family so you guys can stay up to date on when I upload. I source all my images from Trend Mood or Makeup World News. Without further ado and further blabbing, let us hop right into this week's purchase or pass. The first product I want to talk about is the Beauty Blender Concealer. I think it's releasing February 10th, so I think it's already released. This is quite an old trend mood image, but I am living for the shade range. I think it is way better than their foundation launch. I think they've learned from that, and I also love the fact that they really listen to the consumer despite, you know, them making the mistake. But they did rectify that by expanding on their foundation range, which I do applaud. I mean, they should, never should have made that mistake in the first place. The brands do have slip-ups and we can't, you know, forever hold them, like cancel them for slip-up like that. So in that sense, they really did learn and they launched a very good shade range by what I can see. That being said, I definitely want to see some reviews and if they are good, I am thinking of purchasing this along with the foundation and just like, you know, testing it together. I really do want to try the foundation and it has been on my wish list for a while. So if this does receive good reviews, it might push me to actually purchase the foundation and concealer as a set, you know. You know what I mean. Marc Jacobs Beauty is also coming out with a coconut nourishing lip oil. It seems like it's going to be really juicy and wet looking, but again, coconut. I might be intrigued in getting that, but I'm I'm not really keen on the idea of spending $29 for like a clear lip oil. I can easily get like a Fenty one or the M Cosmetics one, or even one from like NYX or ELF, so I'm not really fussed about that. That is why I'm just going to pass on this. We're also seeing some new from Zoeva Cosmetics in terms of them releasing a new concealer. I haven't tried anything from Zoeva and I don't think I am going to be this year. I guess I'm just not a target consumer for this brand in terms of like nothing of theirs has ever intrigued me. I mean, if they do release something, I always have my eye on the lookout. So if they do release something that really does catch my eye, I definitely will try it. But as for concealers, I'm pretty sure I'm good with sticking to the couple that do intrigue me. I'm just gonna pass on this. Let's talk about the Fix Plus Magic Radiance Spray. So this is essentially is a normal fix plus but with vitamin C. I don't know what it is about adding vitamins or like you know extra fluff to like setting sprays but for me it's just like a setting spray and why would I want vitamin C on top of like this mound of makeup right here. So with that being said, I'm going to pass on this. I'll just stick to the OG Fix Plus that I live, breathe, die for. Thank you very much. I am just going to talk about the Born This Way entire line, which includes the light highlighting palette and the natural nudes eyeshadow palette, which is being released Feb 9th. Again, already out. But I just want to talk about the palette 
This is, again, not a mint for me because this is Nude Central. I do like a good brown smoky eye and a good natural makeup day, but this is just not for me. I am, however, intrigued by the face light highlighting palette. It does seem very hourglass-esque in terms of them having three finishes of powders, but I definitely want to see more reviews before I do a double take. I haven't seen any that have been like revolutionary, which has made me go, okay, I need to go buy it like right now, like leave the house. And next up, I want to talk about the Sugar Pill, the capsule collection in pink edition. So I'm guessing they might come out with another edition and I'm keen to see that. But this looks really beautiful, very pastel-esque, very, um, I love the color story, I love the concept, it's like a pill, like, you know, it's kind of like part of their brand in essence, and in a way, brand in a palette, so I feel like this is a really nice palette to come out with, however, I am not purchasing it because it's not something I would personally wear and Sugar Pill is a, again a brand I'm looking at you know purchasing something but this palette just doesn't cool to me so I'm just gonna pass on it the color story is really nice but it's not something that I'm looking for and I'm into I feel like I have some of these colors already in my collection let's talk about the Jaclyn Hill palette. This is just a bunch of warm colors and I feel like this looks like the 35O with some pinks and reds. There's so many doubles in this palette and unnecessary colors. I feel like if this was more curated it would be more popular because smaller palettes are like in right now. <laughs> First of all, I'm never supporting Jaclyn Hill at all. I just find her ways of collabing and just going about. I don't know what she's doing. If she actually really cared about YouTube and really did not just film whenever she was going to release a product and make us feel sorry for her and then, you know, push a product in our face. There are so many other collaborations that are just done right that make me think why are people still supporting her? And I can make a whole, literally a whole last video on why I will never be purchasing this palette. Especially because it is in a collaboration with Morphe. Let's look at Catrice and Disney. This is definitely, I'm guessing, going to be more affordable than the Dose of Colors collaboration with Disney. But I really like it. They're taking on the more feminine kind of side to Disney in terms of like mini and daisy palettes. I think this is beautiful for Catrice. Uh, the color stories are really, really nice. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a hold of Catrice Cosmetics in Australia, but this does look like if we combine the mini and the daisy collection together, it does look like the Huda Beauty uh, new nudes palette which I have so I am not going to be purchasing this as for the milk makeup vegan milk cleanser and the vegan vegan milk moisturizer I've been hearing such great things about it but your girl is oily as hell so um, as I might see if I can see more reviews on the cleanser um, but I'm not really looking one for one right now but if this is like life changing then I definitely will be looking at getting it. Next up Tatcha is releasing the Silk Canvas Protective Primer. So essentially it is the liquid version of the Silk Canvas which is something that really does intrigue me because everyone loves a Silk Canvas but for some reason I tried it and it clogs my pores. It gives me red spots like I'm about to break out. You know, those ones like irritate. I don't know if it irritates me, but I'm more into kind of gel primers or 
lightweight primers and this seems more of a lightweight version so I'm definitely and it's going to be available March the 3rd online at Tatcha and then I'm not sure about Sephora maybe Sephora as well I'm not sure when it's going to come to Australia but I definitely will be looking at purchasing this next up we have the Jeffree Star Bloodlust palette and for the first time in a long time I did a double take because I really did like the color story. People say it's all over the place, people say it's too light, there's not enough purples. I really like this color story for some reason. Why does it have to be by Jeffree Star? Because right now I'm not supporting him. Just because he's been in a lot of drama and continues to be so until like he calms down because I'm never really into cancelling people. I for sure have cancelled Jacqueline Hill. Just I think she was really golden in the old school YouTube days, but she's just done so many things with her brand, with her, the way she continues to carry on YouTube and collaborate. So yeah, I'm just no longer supporting her and just, yeah. Obviously, I am so much happier to support someone than to just cancel someone, but there are just some things that are done by people where you're just like, you know, your view and your money is how you show support to them. That is why I'm not going to be purchasing this palette. Also, this palette has a lot of wasted space. I know that the component and the packaging is a major factor for people who do collect Jeffree Star cosmetics. So, I mean... It is beautiful, I have to say. I, I can admire and applaud him for, you know, the effort and, you know, the idea and thought gone behind this. But I'm just going to pass on this. I want to talk about Jungle Rock, which is a collaboration with Bretman Rock and Wet n Wild Beauty. And this includes an eyeshadow palette, a brush set, loose highlighters, mascara and a setting spray that's what i like i love the collaborations bretman rock does because it is him and you can see him wearing these looks so i i love the campaign especially this one like come on this is so him and i love that he gets to put his creativity and thought with it and wet and well allowed for him to kind of really take creative control so this just makes me want to support him more with the palette I think the palette has a wonderful color story they are cool they are warm tones if I was only able to grab a hold on this I would definitely be purchasing the palette but as I am not in the US I can't next up I want to talk about the Bite Beauty Align and Define Lip Primer and the Agave and makeup lip serum so what I heard is the serum comes with a like a plastic applicator and it feels more silicone like than nourishing so from that sense I'm just gonna pass on this it does look so beautiful but you can tell with the doe foot applicator it's not one of those and when you I don't know when I apply something on my lips I want it to be in a brush especially if it's a lip oil or in a nice doe foot um doesn't matter the shape but it has to be kind of like you know that kind of soft kind of applicator if that makes sense especially if it is like 24 22 dollars which is quite up there and elf does have lip oils that I've heard great things about so with that being said I'd much rather pass on this for now. Next up, Milani Cosmetics is releasing a collaboration with Ali Brooks. I'm not really sure about Ali. It is the Ludicrous Lights collaboration and it comes with a blue, peach and pink iridescent highlighter and a lip gloss to go along with this. This is so intriguing. If I had access to this, I would definitely be purchasing the peach and pink highlighter and lip gloss kind of duo those are the things that I am into 
So with that being said, yeah, I would definitely be purchasing that. Especially with the pricing of it. It is kind of like, Milani is a high-end kind of drugstore. It has reached that high-end drugstore pricing point. But still, I would definitely be looking at purchasing that. Next up, Dior Beauty has sneak peeked another backstage palette. This palette is called Rosewood. This looks beautiful and stunning. But definitely not for me. This color story is... I'd rather get like a cool tone neutral one. Um, something which they have released. I love Dior Beauty. Like I say so much about lip oils. But I am getting the Dior lip oil. It is just so beautiful to die for. I have their lip maximizers. Their lip products. I want to get their blushes as well. Ugh. Dior just speaks to me out of all the luxury makeup that there is. I've always, I don't know, had this really deep-rooted love for them. I just love the campaigns. I love the products. They seem well thought out. So with that being said, I am not going to purchase this. But I really do love the looks of this. And I'm sure there are many people out there that are going to be purchasing this baby. Last but not least, I want to talk about the Sailor Moon and Colourpop collaboration. I have never watched Sailor Moon for some reason, but I feel like I am missing out on a lot because people do seem to love Sailor Moon. This collection comes with one Sailor Moon eyeshadow palette for $20. The blushes, $12 each, and they're two blushes. There are glitterly, there are two glitterly obsessed, $9 each. Then there's a lip bundle, which is the daylight and the moon tea, um, and the moonlight lip bundle, and they come with an ultra blooded lip and an ultra glossy lip. And the full collection is eighty nine dollars and is available. Now my thought is, I want the full collection <laughs> because. I literally can't pick between the blushes and the palette and the lip bundles. Literally, they are stunning and they are something that I gravitate towards. I mean, I do have a blush in this hot pink color. I have a cream, I have a satin blush, but I don't have a matte version. And then the peachy one is like with sparkles. So that just automatically calls my name. So with that being said, I am going to be purchasing this collection. I may not be a fan or like may not know much about Sailor Moon. But hey, I'm, I mean if the colour story is there, it's there. And then maybe, you know what, I'll get into watching some Sailor Moon. And then, you know, if I love it, the makeup comes out as a bonus. And last but not least, I want to talk about Benefit coming out with their new Georgia Blush and Cheek. And I need this in my life. Because the glow that it is giving is insane. It looks so beautiful. And I love Benefit blushes. So, can you guys tell I'm into blushes? Rewind a little. They are also coming out with a couple of cheek palettes as well. The Cheek Stars Reunion Tour. And then the Mini Reunion Tour. These look bulky as hell. The mini reunion tour I really do like. It does come with a Hula Matte Bronzer Mini, Sugar Bomb Blush Mini, and a Georgia Blush Mini. If it is bulky, mm -mm, girl, I'm not getting that. I don't think I've heard anyone say that they love the packaging of these box blushes because they are so bulky. I wish they were just sleek. Like, I don't mind the cardboard packaging. That's cute and all. That's fine. I wish they changed that. I wish they actually heard and listened to consumers. I think that would be a major point up to the brand. But I don't think they're going to do that anytime soon. I mean, if they do, I will literally fall off my chair when I'm doing one of these videos. So yeah, those are my thoughts on this week's new makeup releases. I know that I've skipped over a few releases, but those just I didn't really want to discuss. And honestly, we'd be here forever, girl. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. What are you into right now in terms of makeup products? Are you into blushes? Are you into 
eyeliners, I even filmed lashes, because I know there was a one point where I was just obsessed with lashes. Girl, I still am. But I mean, like, obsessed, obsessed, like I couldn't leave the house without it. So, let me know, are you into lip products? Sound off your thoughts in the comments down below. I would love to hear that. Again, thank you so much. I would love it if you guys would give this video a like and subscribe. I try to upload as much as possible. I'm trying to get back on the uploading game. I love you guys with all my heart. And I'll catch you, my beautiful best friends, in the next video. Bye!